Everybody, welcome to episode 40 of Over the Hill with Underhill. Noah is here, Zoe is also here. Um, how are you doing today? I am doing great, and I just remembered I was going to plug in my computer, so let me find the cord. <laughs> um, so today is the... Uh, it's Valentine's. It's those times where you get the Valentines. Uh, Ooh, Valentines. I love that. Yeah, it's the Valentines, and that's cool, I guess. Yeah. It's a time that exists, and I've never really used it to its full advantages. And, uh, you know. I mean, what is really the full advantage of Valentine? I mean, we all know what the day is supposed to be celebrating, right? It's not... It's not what it is. It's St. Valentine. Yeah, well, right? I, don't, I don't think anybody knows anything about that. So I do. I heard it on an Adventures in Odyssey, but I can't remember the exact full details. Well, there you go. But, you know, because I'm homeschooled, of course I know that. <laughs> I was homeschooled. If, if I knew it, I've forgotten. So I don't know if you heard that one. But, I yeah. It's definitely not what we celebrated it as. And also, this you're quiet again this week. What's oh, wrong? I'm quiet again. Okay. Let me fix that real quick here. How did I do this last time? I don't remember. You did something. This is why you have to tell me before we start recording, because then I'll spend... I feel like when you start playing the ukulele, you messed it up. But also, maybe I just wasn't paying attention before. Um, all right. So... Today being Valentine's Day, uh, uh, do you want to talk about that? I, guess, I don't know. Valentine's Day, the day where I get stuff from my family members sometimes and nobody else and I don't really care. And it's just a day to ignore all the posts that people post. Well, do you ignore them or do you at least read them? No, I look and I read them and I just feel annoyed. Man, I'm maybe not annoyed. Sometimes I think it's cute, but sometimes I'm like, eh, I've seen 50 of these today. I'd rather not see another one. It gets to the point where it's like, this is too many. Did I get louder? Speak again. Did I get louder? Is this, was this louder for you? This is the exact same. All right. I just turned up your volume, I think, which is not. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's not letting me do mine. I think something about maybe like oh, okay. the, is this better? That's better, yeah. Okay, I figured it out. All right, cool. Okay, good. Alrighty then. Yeah. So, so Valentine's. Yeah. It is what it is. We saw our cousins today in celebration of the season, um, which was nice. Um, and yeah, that's probably all we're gonna do. Or the Valentines. Um, I'm sure everybody has their own things that they'll be doing. Uh, if you want to let us know about that, that'd be fun. Um, but yeah, uh, that was a terrible transition. I went on to a topic I was not prepared to speak on. Um, and here we are. So today we will be covering um, some of the things that I know everybody wants to know. We're going to get to our WandaVision review as we, uh, did we do one last week? Um, I don't think I, we did. I don't think we did. So, how far yeah, behind I don't think are we, we did. Now? What? How far behind on reviewing are we now? Two, so we, if we didn't do it last week, then we probably did it the week before. Well, we had our guests on the week before. Oh. That's why I think we're three behind. No, no, that was more than, so last, so episode 39, we didn't. Episode 38, we did do a review. And then episode okay. 37 was our guest. Got it. See, time flies when you're here. Um, <laughs> yeah, so we're going to get into that later on in the episode. But first, we have, and we also get to Super Bowl commercials. But first, as an entry into this episode, um, 
if you are on my uh, Finsta, as Zoe calls it, the fake Instagram, the one that is only there so that I can post random stuff instead of ruining uh, all of the great pictures of me on the internet, um, I posted a picture. Uh, and it was of an alarm going off of my phone. And I believe the caption was, um, excuse me? And I need to, I, I'm not, I have a problem. So over the past week or so, I've realized that snooze, I've never seen the word snooze before, apparently. I have it on my alarm clock, which is right next to it. It's that it, I can keep track of the time. But for some reason, I never realized that it has two O's in it. So I, I post this picture. Uh, I was like, oh, Apple's drunk. They put two O's in snooze. And then I, I, I'm like, hey, did you guys see this? And everybody was, my, my dad was like, no, you're stupid. I was like, oh, <laughs> okay. So now I've had this constant crisis over, over the past week. Like, why, why have I never seen this before? Why is this all new to me? And why is it wrong? It, it still looks wrong, but I don't, there's one O is not correct. It is. It's two O's. Ooh is two O's. Yeah, I know. But in my mind, if two O's isn't correct and one O isn't correct, then how do I spell snooze in my head? I don't Sometimes, know. Sometimes, I'm not even kidding you. I've written, like when I'm doing writing or whatever, or I've just written so many words that I look at a word and it's almost like I've never seen that word before. I'm like, what even is it? This does not look like a, it is right, but it's clear. It's like the basicest word ever. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, no, I don't. That's, this is the first time this has happened. This this happens to me all the time. But then I kind of like, I'm just like, well, you know what? Whatever. Who cares? Yeah, get this over it. to you all the time. And then I forget about it. And then How next time I look, but the thing is, next time I look at that word, I don't remember that I had this thought last time. So it's, it's just, just the I get same so word you, over and over again. No, it's different words. I'll just be writing so much that I and I. It's like the first. It's like almost like I finally look at a word for the first time. It's like I've just never paid attention to that word. I just kind of like, oh, that's that word. And it's like I'm finally analyzing. You know, I do this with people too. Like I realize sometimes I just never really looked at the people. Like it's almost now, like that is something that I've also had happen to me. One day I'm just like walking. I'm just looking at people like my people I know, and then all of a sudden I like look at them, and I'm like I like look look at them. As if I've never seen it before. I'm like, wait, what? Like, I never noticed this. St and it's like, but like at the same time, I know everything about them. I know, I know their facial, you know, their facial features and their body, like height or, you know, I know all of that. But it's almost like I've never seen it before, but at the same time I have. And it's like the weirdest feeling ever. This how it works. I'm having this memory that I did that once. I don't remember who it was once? that I was looking at, but it's definitely happened at least once. Once is it? This happens so to me all, this happens to me like at least a couple times, if not all the time. All the time. Well, not These all the time. to you all the time. I think we've got an actual problem here with you. What is, what is happening? Maybe not all the time. I think my brain is just so useless. Like I'm just, I just take things for granted almost. Like I just, I just know them for what they are. And then like one day my, I'm like bored and my brain decides to like actually look. I don't know. Like I can't tell but no, no, I think my brain is just tricking me into feeling that way. I honestly think, and because then the next time I see that person, I never think about it again. Like, I don't think about it again. See, and I, 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 I can very quickly just be like, you know what? I need to stop. I'm very quickly like, yeah, whatever. I just, and I stop thinking about it. But it only, it's like for a second, I'm almost like, this person looks foreign to me almost. I'm like this, yeah. or like this word looks wrong, completely foreign. And like, I messed it up completely. Like, it looks like I spelled it wrong. I'm like, is that really how you spell whatever the word is? And it's always like a basic word, you know, something that I should know how to spell. And it's just like, oh, and it's not that I'm spelling it wrong. It's just that it looks wrong. And I feel like maybe this happens with other things too, but those are the two things that I can remember. So yeah, I don't This know. happens, this has happened quite a few times, like more than I can count. Yeah. I'm trying to remember who it was, but it, yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But, yeah. Cause it's yeah, not the so, person, it's the brain. It's the, something's wrong with the brain. Yeah. I, I, but this happens to you all the time. That that's something. I don't like. I don't. Maybe all the time isn't the right word, but I can't think of a word that describes how many times it's happened more times than I can count. But also, more I feel times like it just, than you can count. 
How high is that you can count, Zoe? Well, more times than I can like remember. So it's an amount but, of time that you don't know is what you're saying. I know it's been happening for a certain amount of time that I can't recall, but I know what happens because it happened the other day. The way you're phrasing this is just the strangest way possible. I know, but I can't like I can't explain it. I just know like it happens, especially if I'm writing a lot and I'm just like kind of tired and I'm like writing and I'm spelling everything wrong and then I finally I'm, write. I'm talking about the people thing because the spelling thing that makes sense. The people thing has happened a couple of times. Okay. Right. Which, I feel like maybe that one's more recently, but yeah, so yeah. random. I didn't even realize that's what you were doing when you posted that. I just thought you were mad that you, that your phone asked you to. I know do which the thing was, which is a good cover, and like people still like the post, and nobody said anything about it. That's what I thought it was. I you know, so I didn't even know. That's it. why I'm saying it now. I should um, really just post like I'm dumb, but I'm not going to. Um, so if you're watching this and you've seen that post, let me know. Um, but yeah, so that's what that was about. Uh, I thought I should address it on the show because the only people that really care about my life are people that are watching this show. So, you know. Oh yeah, of course. I'm joking, of course. But yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah. so on to our next topic. It is the Super Bowl commercials. The the one thing that obviously we should be reviewing right now, uh, because everybody needs to know what was the best one, uh, and. Let me get to my list here. I oh, did you made rank, a list? I did rank all of the commercials like I do every year. Um, I will say. I'm not going to um, review all of them, but we can just point out a couple of our favorites. If that's I, hadn't, I hadn't looked at the playlist until when I started watching them like an hour ago. And I looked and I was like, 50 other videos? I'm not sitting through all of this. And then I was like, oh wait, no one's going to make me watch all of them, so I better do it. They're only all a minute this. long. Like... It, I know, but like I was kind of like trying to do the mental math. I was like, this is going to take me an hour to watch. And then I realized that my math wasn't correct. And because I, I was like, that's impossible. And then, yeah, my brain was, my brain has been messed up for like a couple hours now. I'm, I've been done. Um, things are going to come, things are just not going to come clearly today. Like right now, I can tell. Yeah. Um, I already know which one's my favorite. But oh. I think it's also just because maybe I'm wrong. And maybe it's because it was near the end, and you know how that goes. Okay. And the more, you know, things near well, the what, end. Well, well, let's just go, what was your favorite one? And also, I think that some of the problem is I don't get some of the, like, funniness about some of the other because I don't know okay. who the people are or whatever. Um, or, like, there's some things I can appreciate. Like, there was some stuff that was, like, a couple jokes about TikTok, and I could I could appreciate, but I have seen that. It's not as funny to me because I don't yeah. do it. So I think my favorite one is the um Adam, Adam and Blake and... Gwen oh thing. yeah that one is because i get it because i watched the voice and i feel like it's so funny for some reason it, i I was, I was like starting to laugh and most of them i was like why am i purposely watching commercials right now and i actually got a commercial watching one of the commercials and i was like what even is this it was for a different brand too and i was like what are we doing right now um and i was so most of them is kind of just like uh another weird drink or food that i don't care about and i kind of get some of them were kind of like touching or whatever but i'm like but yet the company that's representing them seems kind of the company that's representing this commercial is just kind of not like, i i just i don't care about the touching ones i only care about the funny ones i like the touching ones i'm just like but it's a beer <laughs> why <laughs> why <laughs> So like the one the one commercial is like i don't um this we're not going to make a commercial this year we're doing the vaccine thing you know we're this is about the vaccine but i'm like you still put your name in there and this is still a commercial and it's still your company so technically in my book this is still a commercial about you guys well it's not Just selling saying. anything though it's i know but at the end hey, they, how great we are that we're doing this which is i know that's thing. what i'm saying at the end instead of putting like like whatever the website for about the vaccine i don't know what the website if there's a website i'm assuming there is they had their oh. logo and their they didn't say anything about it at the end and i was like um that what it didn't even say like their website with like slash vaccine or anything it just said their website and their regular logo and it said if you want to know more okay. or something and i was like that's i don't know i was like this is just this is not how you do it we can all know what we all know what you're doing you're trying to that's what all the like most of the touchy feel like commercials are doing they're trying to make them seem like this amazing company that's saying good things 
and supporting people and doing what the people want. But, you know, you can't really say that the people at that company really believe any of that stuff. So who cares? Yeah. That's why the funny ones are better. And I found that one very funny, which is why I think is my favorite. But also that could just be because I don't get like some of the people. I was kind of like, I don't get it. Yeah. You know, that makes sense. So that's just me. Um, and also, I might not. Have, I might have been looking away for some of them. Of course, you were. But I was listening the whole time. But I guess that's fair because that's what you would be doing if you watched the. Super I know. Film. So. I know you wouldn't be looking the whole time. You probably miss half the movie. I looked all the time because. That's I amazing. but I if it see if I heard something and I was intrigued, I did skip back. But I I could tell from what the audio was that it was just like yeah, this is, this is boring. So, was there something uh, more I was supposed to get out of that? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I know, speaking with my grandfather, he, he laughed a lot for the Wayne's World one, which was Uber Eats, I think. Uh, it was the guys with the long hair, and uh, Cardi B was there. Oh, that one. See, I don't even know if he really, like, did he, does he even know who I don't Cardi think he B does. Is? He just liked it. So. I thought it was it actually her because I wasn't really paying it, attention. I think it was. I, I don't really know what she looks like, but I assume. Because I almost I glanced over for a second and I I felt like it wasn't her, like if it was like a fake person. But then I looked away again, and so I didn't course, really look. What were you doing? You had painting? an hour. You were painting, of course. It, it, I did look, and then I looked again, but I wasn't really. I was just like kind of like was trying to do an audio listen. But. So, of is there anything else that you wanted to point out? Ones that you liked? Um, as we know on this show, if I didn't write it down, I'm probably gonna forget it, and I did forget the rest Great. of them. So, I mean, I can look at them right now while you talk. I can pull up the list. I also so. have them pulled up. Um, okay. One of the big ones that I enjoyed was a series, which I don't even know if it's in this playlist. Because I was looking for it and I couldn't find it, but that could be just my. There was opinion. one video that was like privated or something. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't know. But uh, it was the Paramount Mountain series. Did you see those? There was two of those, right? Uh, I think there were three. But... <gasps> the one with Dora? Yes. Yeah, but it's like the old Dora, not the new Dora. Well, the, yeah. So, because that's the, getting ready for their Paramount streaming service, apparently. Um, Whatever that means. Well, it's, it's going to be like Disney Plus, except for yeah who has time for all of this apparently people do um so yeah there, i liked those they were entertaining i liked when dora was the leader like that was funny i like james corden uh which might be a detriment to my uh cred around the streets but you know it's fine um so that was cool uh I'm sure that you saw on the Sesame Street one. What? Uh, the Sesame Street one. Did you see there that? There was one? a Sesame Street one? Yeah. Is that not in here? That was like one of the no. first ones. Anyway, so David Diggs, who was uh, mm. in Hamilton. Uh, he was Jefferson was in that one. Oh. Yeah. I, don't, I, don't I didn't see a Sesame Street one. But yeah. I feel like I remember someone famous that I knew, at least a couple of them, and it might I have been. I can't hear you. You're leaning back like that. I don't know what. What? You, you were leaning back, and I couldn't hear you. Oh, I was just saying. Um, there was no Sesame Street one that I could tell of, but I I recognize some famous people, and he could have been one of them. But like, I mean, <laughs> probably yeah, not the, actually. The guy with the long, the dreads. You know, he's also. There was a Jonas in one and of every them. Every time they show that, I say. Ooh, it's David Diggs, Snow Piercer. No, I didn't see that commercial. That was not on the list. All right, fine. I liked it. I'm getting uh, a tissue also, while you talk. There was also Flat Matthew McConaughey in the Doritos commercial, which I thought was funny. Um, yeah. Uh, what else was there? Oh, Bud Light. Bud Light is usually one of the better ones, but they kind of like they lowballed it for me. Like, this wasn't a Dilly Dilly. This wasn't um, any of their classic ones. This was just a basic, like, here's a bunch of people. And I'm like, okay, sure. Um, where did she go? I wasn't listening to what she said, so. 
I think it, okay, there she is. Oh, you wouldn't got a tissue, okay. Um so yeah, that one was good. Rocket mortgage. I, I'm trying to find these ones so I can remember what they were, because I didn't do a second watch, which was probably the problem. Oh, there was Will Farrell uh going to Norway. Which I thought was funny. Oh, but I think I saw that one. I didn't know that's. Did I know that was? You should know, know who that is. It's like one of the most famous people. That one was okay. Yeah. So these are the all pun, about like, the punchline came kind of the punchline kind of came near the end. So. Yeah. And also, for some reason, in my mind, the only thing I could think of, I wanted to look in the comments, but I didn't get a chance. But for some reason, I was like, uh, no, I was. No, now I'm okay. I don't know why I thought Norway was Finland for a second there, but also that's part of the joke that I was thinking. Rhett doesn't think Finland exists, so I'm gonna look in the comments and see if anyone said that. And of course, now I'm thinking about that's not, that's not right. And also, I didn't get a chance to look in the comments. So, well, it's a lost cause. Uh, there was also yep. the Tide one, which I think is my one of my top ones. I gave this one a nine. It was. The Jason Alexander hoodie. I don't know uh, why it's it's so funny to me. It's just, funny, like, but I don't know who it is, so it kind of just. I don't it up to me. really know either. I think he was on Seinfeld. I could be wrong. That's why. That's why I don't know. Um, but it, it was just so so funny to me that like the the different emotions on the the sweatshirt were just really dumb and i loved it um what else is in here the t-mobile one i gave an eight which was the one with uh gwen stefani and blake um they did the same they did two two commercials and the first one was not as funny they did that two? one was funny it was two oh. they were almost exact same just with different people yeah it was the same oh that was the brady and gronk one yeah that one was but good. I definitely like the I definitely like that other one. That one was good. Yeah. Um Uber Eats, which that was the the Wayne's World one I also gave a nine to. I'm not sure why, because I remember it being cringy, but maybe that's why I liked it. So I don't know. Um and then the big one was Alexa as Michael B. Jordan was also a nine. I thought that was really funny. That one was just almost uncomfortable for me. I was kind of like, I know Ugh. it's almost uncomfortable, but it's also really funny. <laughs> and it's Michael B. Jordan, who is a legend. So that was my review. It wasn't as in depth as I thought I was going to go, but you know, <laughs> um, a terrible Dr. Squash commercial. Cause I think I've seen that like a, before. And the ending of the Paramount one was like, oh, okay. That was kind of lame. But anyway, so that's the that's the review. I'm going to turn off this light, this big light, because it's hurting my head. So sorry that you're getting emo lighting now. Wow, you got really loud for a second there. <laughs> yeah, because I leaned into the computer. Ooh, yeah, look at this. Ooh, ooh, you know, you know. Anyway, so leading out of this, um, it is time to talk about the best brand mascots of all time. Um, commercials, I've always loved commercials because of how silly they can be and they just fit my comedy really well. Uh, Zoe's not paying attention to me. I am, I'm listening, I'm just writing down the notes that I need to remember for this episode. Okay. Um, uh, what was I saying? Mascots, brands, Mascots are really like all time. Comedy best. funny. Yeah. So, and they're really short, so I don't have to like be in it a long time. So I've made a list and we're going to go through and we're going to decide who the best mascot is. We're going to do a couple different categories and then we'll have like the best of those, um, wins because we like ranking on this show i i could have done a uh oh what's it called the board the ranking board what's that called 
your list? Yes. I could have done that. Didn't bother. That's so. fine because ranking and reviewing are two best things. So. Exactly. But tier so. list does not start with an R, so it can't be one of our best things. Exactly. Um, so first up in the assorted foods category, we have uh, Mr. Peanut, uh, the Jolly Green Giant, the Kool-Aid Man, Pillsbury Doughboy, Chester Cheetah, the M&Ms, the Gerber Baby, and the Pringles Man. So there's a lot of great options in here. Just your initial thoughts going through that list. Pillsbury is the best one. The Doughboy is the best one. Yep. Give me some reasons. The other ones are cringe. That one isn't. <laughs> Mr. Peanut is cringe to you? Yeah, the I think so. Kool-Aid Man is cringe to you? Well, I've seen enough of the Kool-Aid Man to know. How have you not seen enough of the Kool-Aid Man? What about the M&Ms, dude? I don't like that because I just feel like it's weird that they talk even though you're eating them. Like, that just feels wrong. I know, but I don't like that. <laughs> not that, I mean, it's kind of funny, but like, it's also kind of weird. I mean, the Doughboy is a thing that you eat. They don't eat them in the commercials. Oh, you mean like they actually eat them in the commercials? Okay. Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> and they talk about eating them in the commercials. The Doughboy is just cute and laughs really cute. He does laugh really cute. So that and we used to of, eat those crescent rolls, and they were really good. Of mascots. Yeah, and where we used to eat those crescent roll things. We did. Yeah. And they were so good. Why don't we eat them anymore? I cannot tell you. It's but just we like don't straight dough. <laughs> we did eat them straight dough, but it was the best tasting dough I'd ever had. This is we, true. Used, we ate them so much, and I mean, is is the the dough boy even in any commercials? Is there really that many commercials? I've seen some. Like he's around. He's just not as not forward as, as some of these other ones. Yeah. Uh, but, I only put the Jolly Green Giant on there because, like, when I was looking through, he's one of the oldest ones. Uh, Chester wait, what kind of looks what? Wait, what brand is the giant one? He's he's green beans. Oh, boring stuff like green beans. Uh, I just watched the uh, food theory video on uh, Cheetos, so Chester Cheetah got a little bit of a boost onto here, and he's kind of cool looking, like you know. Um, I'm not always a fan of mascots in the first place. I feel like you can kind of do without them in food. But can you really? People are going to eat Cheetos whether there's a tiger or not. It's a cheetah. No, cheetah. <laughs> Goodness. <laughs> Told you my brain wasn't going to be working. Well, if you're selling to kids, which is... That's true. Of, and you also need a thing that's going to set you apart that people can be like, oh, it's the one with the cheetah on it. That's true, but I don't remember it for the cheetah, uh, clearly. Clearly, barely remember what it looks like, but I do know that it's called cheetahs. And I do know that I've never really had one before, so. Okay, great. Uh, so I think I think the final three in this category, uh, sorry, M&Ms, uh, there's just too many of you, uh, is First Mr. Peanut. Mr. Peanut made a huge run at the title uh, with the whole baby nut thing from last year. Did you miss Baby Nut? I might have. Or maybe my brain's lagging. Okay, so basically, Mr. Peanut died. And the Kool-Aid Man cried and created Baby Nut. And he was a baby for a while. And then this year, he grew up. And I was waiting for that commercial with the with him. He's like, hey, I'm here. And then he just never showed up. And I was like, what is happening? So uh, shame on you, planters. You missed your chance. Um, Yes, he was not a baby anymore, which is unfortunate because that's probably like his best thing when he was a baby, but he's not anymore. So, um, but he's is he on packaging? Yeah, he's on the packaging because they probably don't want reprinted to be a baby. Well, they would it look do like it. it was different. I don't know if they put. You already did it. I don't know. Because I'm just saying they're probably going to want to try to quicken out the process so they don't have to repackage stuff. People just might forget, and then they don't have to deal with that. I mean, they have but to make new get... packages every time. They're not reusing the packaging. Yeah, but you know how long it takes to, like, edit a new thing and, like, get the machines to do it? As it much like as much it work is to, to me. animate a commercial. 
It's too much work to me. All right. So uh, we'll put him at number three, probably. The Kool-Aid Man, though, like, he's always been cool. So I don't, I think that's going to be the bone of contention here. Is the Kool-Aid Man cool enough to beat the Doughboy? What do you? I didn't, didn't Rent Link do, like, a funny parody about the Kool-Aid Man the other day? I don't know. But I'm what I was thinking know about is, it. The Kool-Aid Man has appeared in a Marvel comic book. So there is the possibility, as crazy as it sounds, that in in this whole world of maybe going into multiverses and things, the Kool-Aid Man could appear in a Marvel movie, and I would be so down for that. That makes him so much better. I don't know. And then there was I the commercial like where he was much. just water, and then they poured like like it like he seemed so sad. He was in the shower and he was just water, and then he put in his Kool-Aid or something. I, I just that that visual is in my head. So I think from what I remember, I don't know. From what I remember of him, I don't like him very much. But that could you don't seem to like anything very much today. Uh, <laughs> I like things when I like things. I guess it's not right now. Quote of the year: I like things when I like things. I don't know why I I then I it's not like I'm just thinking of this right now. I feel like I always felt this way. <laughs> Maybe I just don't like commercials that much. I think they just get repetitive and boring and then you learn not to like them. Okay. So are you okay with conceding uh the doughboy to to uh the Kool-Aid man? You seem yeah, because you seem to like him, so Okay, great. We're moving on to fast food. Uh, I know there's a bunch of them out there, but I tried to consolidate to the most famous ones that would make sense for us. Uh, you got the Colonel from KFC. You got Ronald McDonald from McDonald's. You got the Burger King. You got Chuck E. Cheese. And you got Wendy. Initial thoughts. I don't like any of these. You don't like any of them. I must just not be a fan of Food mascots or commercials or something. What is wrong with you? I just find them kind of annoying. But that's how they appeal to other people. And like, especially to children. Because children love annoying things. And me, apparently. Uh, I think if it's up to me, I'm eliminating uh, Ronald McDonald right away. Because he's creepy and he hasn't been around in a while. I know, really weird. He's not in the mainstream. (laughs) Uh, Chuck E. Cheese is also creepy. Creepy. But, like, he rides a skateboard, so that puts him at But, like, four. we haven't really done any, like, we haven't been to Chuck E. Cheese. It doesn't matter if you've been to Chuck E. Cheese. It's just I know, but, like, appeal I just e. don't Cheese. know. I haven't really been able to, like, witness what maybe the greatness is. Maybe there is no this greatness. This isn't about right. who makes you want to eat Chuck E. Cheese more, as much as it is. Just... Who is the best? Just of all. Yeah, best means that they look cool and you do, they do cool things and entice you. I get it. And if we're talking, okay. Uh, so number three for me is probably the Burger King. Even though of all of the fast food restaurants, the Burger King is the one that I've latched onto as my choice, even though I've, I'll never eat anything there. That is the one that I put my fork into. Just like, this is the one. It, I, McDonald's, uh, Arby's, none of that. It's, I guess I could put the Arby's voiceover guy as a character. but not going <laughs> he's, he's good. Um, but I'm putting my stamp into Burger King. But the Burger King himself, eh, he's just okay. We used to so, eat at Burger King a lot. Then and we used to, to get those crowns. We used to get the crowns. On, was, we did. Wasn't it birthdays or something? I don't know. Maybe. I think they were. Got them. So then it's down to them. the Colonel and Wendy. Now, Wendy is cool because of the Twitter stuff. Have you seen Yeah, that? that's, that's yeah. pretty much all she's cool for. Yeah, so that's, that's her one redeeming quality, much like Baby Nut. Um, <laughs> then you got the Colonel <laughs> everywhere. Did you see the one, the that they made the KFC movie with uh, Ace, the guy who played AC Slater in Saved by the Bell as the Colonel. I don't know if I did, and I don't think I want to see it. It's like it's like I, a love thing. It's I don't really like the Colonel personally. You don't like the Colonel, okay? 
No. You don't like anybody. Help me, Zoe. What's wrong with Stop me? Stop saying I, no. Appreciate I, my art. I like the Twitter Wendy thing. Okay. But she, I feel like she needs to make a, like something in the commercial sometime. Why don't they ever use her? I don't know. So it is, could be cool. Is Twitter enough to get it above the commercial work of Colonel Sanders? Well, I think most people he's like been a snowman. I think, yeah. He's been a snowman. He's been uh, AC Slater. He's been just he's been the bucket itself. Like he is all of those are just the recent things that I know. Of. If I if I go into the mind of other human beings, everyone else would probably pick the Colonel. So, but we're us, so we can do whatever we want. Are we are, okay? So are we picking Wendy then? Whatever you want to pick, because obviously we can tell that I don't know enough. To okay, know. I guess we're going to pick Wendy. So congratulations, Wendy. You're moving on to the next round. Uh, we're moving on to Cereal. This is probably the place where you have to have a mascot to make it work. Probably. Because besides just eating Apple Jacks, because I didn't put the apple and the cinnamon on here because that's just like, at, uh, they're not cool. Um, no. So other than that, I don't really think you can sell anything. Uh, so we have Tony the Tiger, classic character. You got Captain Crunch. You got Toucan Sam. Uh, you got the Cheerios B. You, you know the B. Yeah, there was that one good commercial about the Cheerios and the B that I think I liked. So then there's Snap, Crackle, and Pop, of course, uh, from... Uh, Rice Krispies, really love them. Got the Lucky Charms guy. And then, uh, very underrated, the Cinnamon Toast Crunch squares where they eat each other. Oh. I like that. For some reason, they're kind of cute and I kind of like that one. Yeah. Uh, so, any of the things, to, do you like any of this? I don't really know. Some of them I haven't really seen that much before. So yeah. that's probably just because we didn't eat those kinds of cereals growing up. And, and we, we didn't really watch it on a TV either. So we didn't. We missed the three main qualities of cereals. <laughs> Cereal mascots, I guess I should say. We missed it out completely. Um, so I might not be able to help as much with this one. Yeah. As I've greatly helped with the other ones, you know. <laughs> yeah, so Tony the Tiger has always been there. But it's true. I'm just like, I, I don't really feel it, you know? Like, he's not cool. He's just there. They're all kind of just there. Yeah. Which is why I kind of want to go with the squares, which is like the... They're the most unique. They're, it's the worst thing that you could choose for this ranking. It'd be the very Cinderella story. But I kind of want to go with it. They're... They're not, they're so different from everything else. Everything else is like an animal or a human. Dress up in a costume to represent something. And they're like, eating each other. Like, it's really selling how great the cereal is because they, they can't help themselves. They'd rather be cannibals than not have the taste of Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Yeah, normally I'm against that, as we've proven from the M&M thing. But, I was gonna say. you know... They're kind of cute. Are we going with the squares in the upset? I mean, everything else is kind of lame. Again, like Burger King before it, Rice Krispies was the cereal that I was like, this is the one. Um, Wait, what does even it look like, the Rice Krispies thing? Just like pieces of Rice Krispie? No, it's like the elves. The elves. Oh, we don't, eat, we don't eat name brand stuff, so. Look it up, Zoe. I'm looking you it have, up right now. You have a computer. You can I got a see phone. What people look like. Um, but yeah, so apologies to anybody who really likes cereal mascots. We're going with the newest one and Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Um, now we're going to move on to insurance, which is like, this is probably the, the commercial oh. bracket. The insurance. Uh, insurance? Yeah. <laughs> Because we got the Geico Gecko, we got Flo, we got the Aflac Duck, we have the General, we have J.K. Simmons, who is the guy from State Farm, that is like, uh, he, you know J.K. Simmons, right? 
Yeah, the State Farm guy. Jake well, he's not State Jake Farm? from State Farm. That's another oh. character. Really? Yeah. There's Jake from State Farm. There's uh so he he's like uh he wears the suit and he's bald and he's uh Oh no, that's farmers. Oh. We Man, are farmers. Boys. That one. That guy. Apologies. Uh then there's also Mayhem from All State. And you have, apparently, Snoopy is technically a mascot for MetLife. So he's technically here. But maybe wow, because these are don't... some great ones. There are some great ones here. Uh, there's also the caveman from Geico, but I didn't want to, like, double over on Geico very much. Because Geico in itself is, I think that's the top of the commercial game. What do you mean, No like flow better but why though because the the geico ones kind of get repetitive they don't they're literally like the most random stuff on the internet yeah but they TV. always say the same thing at the end no they don't say the same thing right am i thinking of the right stuff there's literally commercials where they don't say the catchphrase as a joke oh i Maybe I just don't pay attention if it says insurance on it. <laughs> you, why did I expect you to be good at this? I thought you'd be all over this. Well, I am kind of. I do. Okay, let me think about it. I guess I kind of understand what you're saying. I have to really reach into my brain. It's really not working today. Um. Yeah, but like flow is pretty good. Mm -hmm. I guess she also has a catchphrase somewhere. Couple. Yeah. Uh, and then there's also the new Jake from State Farm, who I I like quite a bit. Uh, he's such he's such a nice guy. He's just so nice. Hmm. There's a lot of good ones. Uh, Mayhem is a classic one, but it's kind of not my yeah, favorite. I'm I'm over that. And the this isn't is ranking kind of the commercials annoying. that they're in. This is just the characters. Yeah. So the duck one kind of kind of over that one. Aflac. Kind of, it was kind yeah, of so over before. I started. think we're down to the gecko, Flo, and Jake from State Farm. Is that fair to say? Yeah. Okay. Jake from State Farm is really good. Yeah. So is the gecko himself funny or good? Or is it what's around the gecko? I don't know. I guess because we just, yeah. I think it's what's around the gecko. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking too. So he's gonna be kind of like, kind of like how the guy from the um the the farmers one. Yeah. He just shows the incidents. He doesn't say much. He delivers the punchline, but he's not doing any of the work. That's true. So that's why he's also out of the running. So, Flo, I've always liked Flo. Um, and her partner guy? That was Jamie. <laughs> Jamie is <laughs> awesome. Uh, um, but then Jake, he's just such a cool guy. He's so, he's so nice. Did you watch the one State Farm commercial for this year? No, I don't think with, I did. With him, uh, with Rogers was there, and Drake was, was Jake. What's that in the thing you sent me yeah, out? Yeah, it should be. It wasn't the. I don't remember show. watching that one. I'm Drake from State Farm. It was. It was. It was I would have remembered that. I would have remembered that, but I don't. So clearly, it was not there. This is ridiculous. Why? Why do I trust random playlists on the internet? Yeah. Um, why do you? The 59 videos I watched clearly was not accurate enough. <laughs> so are we going with Flo or Jake from State Farm? Can they just tie for number one? Okay, we'll tie them. Uh, and then we got the random other products that I didn't have a place for. Um, we have the Travelocity uh, Gnome, I guess, whatever he is. He met a lot on Amazing Race, I'll tell yeah, you that much. he was all over Amazing Race. So that's that's probably why he's here. Uh, we also have Mr. Clean. Uh, oh, gotta man. love Mr. Clean. You got the Energizer Bunny, which I have a story about the Energizer Bunny. Uh, we have the Michelin Man. And we have the Clydesdale horses. Um, 
The Clydesdales for... That's Budweiser, right? That's the one before that you said. Uh, the Michelin Man? That's the tires. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, the Energizer Bunny, I lived, like, the first half of my life thinking that its nose was its mouth. Um, so, I had a, I, it was, it was weird. Like, I don't know why I thought that. So, it, it really messed me up once I realized that. Um, but yeah, so any, anything, is, is Mr. Clean the obvious favorite here? Yeah, I would say so. Yeah. So, uh, with, we don't really need to spend a ton of time, ton of time on that because we're almost at an hour already. Um, so we have Mr. Clean, we have Flo, we have Jake from State Farm, we have uh, the the crazy squares, we got Wendy, and we got the Kool Aid Man. So, who is the crown champion? of branded mascots. I don't know. There's so many, well, I feel like we have to either go with Mr. Clean or the one of the insurance ones, right? Because so, Wendy and the squared ones were kind of like a weak link to begin with. Really? I thought, Wendy, I can see, that's fine. And the Kool-Aid squares man, too, you didn't really like the Kool-Aid man. So I'm okay with that. Compared to Flo, the Kool-Aid Man is not as cool. Yeah, so the squares make the final four, which is amazing. Um, Mr. Clean, he's just, he's such an, another nice guy. Like, nice guys, they always say they finish last, but in this list, they're finishing first. Uh, the, the Mr. Clean, he's always there. He's always cleaning up for you. Uh, he's the dad that you never had if you didn't have a dad. Um <laughs> So, um, uh, so you say Mr. Too- Clean is just a classic, kind of like yeah. Flow and like all those other insurance ones. I feel like that's one of the ones you've just seen for a really long time. I think the Whereas, square should be four. Is Jake, is he in the running? That's such a meme or like a joke, Jake from State Farm. I feel like khakis. It's so <laughs> the funny. That I tried to wear khakis, it didn't work. Really? I hate khakis. Uh, we could get into that another time. Um, so yeah, but Flo, I think is, she carries the most weight here. So I think it's only fair that Flo wins the greatest brand mascot of all time. Are you in agreement with me? I would say so. And it's only gotten better with her partner and all the other little things that they've been doing. So So, congratulations to Progressive. Uh, you did it. Are they our insurance company? I don't know. Pretty sure that's what they do. Na- the name well, and price. I'm saying, are, are we paying progressive for insurance? I don't remember. We might be. I, have I no don't know. Who are, who are uh, providers. I don't know who is our insurance anyway, people. Anyway, congratulations but... to Flo. You did it. You win a big old mm. nothing. You win some Canadian points. Um, yeah, so of all, let us know what you think. Uh, uh, Send us, tell us, tell us, tell us who tell it is. Tell us if we missed anything. Tell us if you disagree or agree. All of those fun things. You do can, you like the um, cinnamon squares as much as we do? Let us know. Uh, <laughs> you can comment on the YouTube or you can DM us at over the hill underscore with underscore underhill. And we love, we could even talk about this again, maybe if we missed maybe. a lot of them or something. So let us know. There's always more to discover and talk about i guess as we've proven doing 40 episodes of this somehow magically exactly so we have the wandavision we just watched it do you want to get into it now because we're probably sitting at about 50 minutes at this point Ugh, i don't know how long it's going to take the other times kind of took a while but we they? did say that we would do it so you want do you want to do like a spoiler free review and then we get into it at another point Spoiler or, free is so difficult to do, Noah. I know. And especially at this point in the show. I say we just maybe go for it. Okay. Oh. Sounds good. Um, so we just watched the latest episode. Uh, I think we should, since we didn't review the last episode. Um, I, so I five. First. I mean, good. 
Um, I have my notes. Yeah. So, but we're gonna we're gonna kind of. Do you want to? We should we should real quick say about episode five. What, that's yeah. That's what I was planning on doing. Okay. So go ahead. Okay. So I'm going to. I feel like this one. Don't, I feel e like don't even speed through your notes. Just say your overall thoughts. I can't remember what happened unless I look at my notes. So. Well, you can look at your notes. Just don't like um, read every single one. Oh yeah, I'm not gonna read every single one. Plus, I feel like it's kind of pointless because now we know more as you watch more episodes. It. So like this one's just kind of like oh. Um, I obviously I like all of the episodes so far. Some of the main points that I was thinking about were like, do the twins have magic, which we'll get to now. We know more. Um, so that was like one thing that I wondered about. Um, one big thing was that Vision was able to undo the mind control on Norm. That was a big thing, I feel like, for us yeah. as we watched. That was one of those important moments of the episode. And I feel like that really kind of like helped us understand more, maybe. It was a cool way to do it, too, I think. So, um, there was a point where that the neighbor lady broke character in front yeah. of Vision. That, was that I was seen. very confused because nothing like that has happened before that or after that. Well, that's not technically true, but we can get into that later. Well, I guess we can't. We can. Um, and it was so weird the way it was. It's almost, I mean, you could tell that had either never happened before or Wanda had just been like not letting Vision know that it happened before because he acted very confused and as if he never heard that happen in the course of their time being there. Which could be because maybe just recently he started to real like he now is not under the mind control anymore. I feel that's not co completely clear now, but it's kind of weird that all of a sudden he's starting to pick up on things. You know what I'm saying? Again, this has not been very long. I think it's I know. become clear that this is every day they wake up. Like we're seeing this is like a week. Yeah, that's true. So. But the fact that, like, in over a couple episodes ago, when, like, the neighbors were talking and, like, the one neighbor was like, we're all here because, and then they didn't say anything, that's when he started to suspect something. Yeah. But why would they say that at all? They should know that they're not supposed to say that in front of him. And also, how did he know, like, how did he access that at all? Like, those are just some questions that are still not completely answered, obviously. Yeah. So it's kind of, like, it's one of those things where you're, like, you're not sure if, like, when they broke the character, that's when they do all the time, and he just didn't realize it until things his mind was able to like, I don't know you know what I'm saying yeah. um it was really cool how like the drone and everything that they sent from the 80s I didn't even know they had drones in the 80s for some reason I didn't know that um and how they could see the stuff inside and I thought that was really cool we know the the guy in charge is doing some fishy business already we knew this and we even know it more now as we moved on to the next episode and Wanda actually comes out of her thing. And I thought that was like something I didn't expect to happen. I didn't know she was going to do that. And, and on top of that, she, like we realized that, Oh, this guy is probably not a good guy. And on top of that, she almost gets him shot down by his own, her, his own people. But um, he didn't, which I think he, is something but, that is important. That's true because the fact that she even left him alive, because she could have clearly could have killed him. She could right have killed everybody herself right there. or the people, but the fact that she left it alive, clearly, I think she's. I don't know if we you know know much more about this now, but you can tell that she's kind of confused and she doesn't know what she wants anymore. Like at first she thought it was a good thing, and then I mean she did kind of want people to leave her alone, but she you think she would have just either like made them come in with her right then and there, wipe their minds or just kill them or something. But I mean, the fact that she didn't kill them probably means that she's a good person still. Like she doesn't want to kill people. Yeah. So, and then plot twist, Wanda's brother shows up, but it's not the same actor. So we don't know what's up with that. And that's when I wrote that. I think the neighbor lady is sketchy. So I don't know what yeah. that has to do with the episode. Um, um, I will say again, uh, it's, it was rumored for a while uh, that this would be happening. Uh, so I, I did see it coming and I was 
very excited about what it could mean. And I, I've said this to you, but uh, of course, this is the actor who played Quicksilver, which is the Wanda's brother uh, in the Fox franchise, because they had joint custody, I guess, of the character since he's he was part of the X-Men, but also uh, part of the Avengers. So both sides owned um, the character. So uh, this is the same actor who played him in Fox, which for the first time we have, it's not confirmed, but we have the possibility that X-Men is coming to the MCU, which is very exciting. Um, yeah, I mean, my, my thought maybe that's not necessarily how deep they want to go into it. It's just like a TV series, you know what I'm saying? Um, may, I was thinking that maybe it's just the whole thing of like with the vision, like he, it seems like he's actually just dead. And the same thing with the brother, he's dead. He's not actually there, there. Yeah. And maybe she, should, but the thing is, it didn't seem like she asked him to come. Whereas Vision, she clearly made him be there. Yeah. But the brother seemed like a surprise to her. Like he just showed up. She didn't mean for it to happen. And I have and my he, And he acts exact. Okay, we'll get into this as we go on with episode. But he does act exactly like her brother, but he's not. And they both know it. But yet he's acting like. That's the thing. It's not exactly like her brother either. But I think that's more because of the era that they're in. He's like almost acting like an actor of her brother, which is what he is. Like, because this is very different from even from what I understand, because I haven't seen it, his character in X-Men and his character in Marvel, as we saw in Age of Ultron. These are, this is not like the same mannerisms and thing, like personality. So I can't really remember, but I mean, you lose I mean, the accent and you yeah. lose a lot of personality. Yeah. Um, okay, now we can get on to episode six. We've already kind of talked about it for a little bit, but um, we'll kind of run through some of my notes, I guess. If you want to add stuff, feel free. Okay. You know? um, first thing I wrote was something bad going on. I don't, I couldn't tell you what that means. So I was trying to eat my pizza and watch and write notes at the same time. And I was just like, I don't. <laughs> um, and I also wrote, they beat people up. <laughs> That was uh, very, very Monica beating up the guards after they got yeah. kicked out. Um, I wrote that the brother knows that she's testing him because he knows right away. Um, but that doesn't necessarily make any sense. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. if she had hired him, hired him, like everyone else that's there to play a part in the role of her show thing that she's doing her life then they went she wouldn't need to test him like she knows it's not actually him yeah but the fact and she knows it's not actually him but she's one i think she's confused on how he knows so much about her maybe but she knows it's not him but she knows it's him yeah i don't know if that makes any sense that just she's, there's there's a lot of ideas going around about what it what what his purpose is um and i'm gonna try not to say anything yeah thanks yeah because i i feel like some of them have more credence than others but just in case i'm not gonna like say yeah. what i because i i as we know i do my research i listen <laughs> to a lot of different people's ideas so i kind of get an idea of what i think is gonna happen um which this is different than because I thought he was just another guy and I think it's very clear that he's not just another guy um and it isn't just a red herring for us yeah so he's very important but it'll be interesting to see why he's important yeah she and she does say oh you look different you know you look different he admits that he looks different things like that it's almost like he knows he's not actually him but he said he's saying that he is at the same time it confuses me and I'm wondering if maybe, because I still feel like there's someone else who has something to do with this. It's not all her, Wanda, doing all of this. And I feel like maybe they sent him. And it could be that other guy. I don't, I don't think it's him either. I think there's something else. But that's just me also wanting, like, the big yeah. thing. So, because I, I just have a feeling, because she didn't seem like she wanted him there. Like, it seemed like a surprise to her. And with the way things are, there shouldn't be surprises like that happening. Yeah. And also the fact that he kind of just uses his powers, like, in front of everyone. 
Whereas well, I think we've gotten to that point with most of the characters. Um, that's true. Because we saw her with Agnes last episode just make the collar appear out of nowhere. Um, and in this episode, it's like very clear that it doesn't really matter anymore and they can just do whatever they want. Yeah, but I feel like Vision still isn't, but he did do it in front of Agnes, but she's already seen Wanda, so like at this point, it doesn't really matter, I guess. And it, she was kind of in that weird daze state, so I don't really know if she's going to remember. Yeah. Um, keep, keep and we can, get, we can get to that. Um, I did write down the part about the Incredibles and the Parent Trap, because yeah. that is an interesting fact, because if we're going in order, this should be the 90s, I believe. Yeah. And Incredibles came out in 2004, and the Parent Trap came out in 98, so. Yeah, this is the thing that I one of the details that I picked up on was this is actually a spoof of Malcolm in the Middle, which is another show that we haven't seen. Um, and I don't really know anything about it, but it, it did release 2000 to 2006. So that would make more sense with the timeline if this is the 2000s. Um, yeah. I felt possibly, like it kind of looked 90s-ish, but like almost 2000s. Like it was like somewhere in the I middle. couldn't really tell you the difference. But this could be because of Elizabeth Olsen being uh, part of the Olsen family, they go back to the 90s for the last episode or something like that because of, of course, the show that I'm forgetting the name of that their, the sisters were on. The, the twins? Oh, that's a different Olsen. I know, but like because of... Oh, the like Full House? Yeah, Full House. So it could be they're waiting to do Full House till the end. But I don't know. We'll see. Because that one's a pretty, like, that's a classic, classic. I know. And it, yeah. So that's, and I, I that's think. one of the theories out there. But, but also, like, it, it, I think it must be really early 2000s because, like, from the Disney Channel stuff I've watched, it's not the comedy, the bits of the actual show that they showed, the show in the show that they showed, didn't seem as much, like, Disney Channel-y to me. So I think it must be, re- like, late. 90s early early 2000s yeah and makes that's, sense. that was the point because um, i didn't watch a lot another of point that, that was made was that they're doing things that changed like dynamics and how shows are made so they went from a studio audience to uh last week there was no studio audience and it was more like a different other thing and yeah. this week they went to more first person shots where they break the fourth wall and there was no background and stuff like that so um, yeah and it's kind of clever to see how things have changed over time like i feel like you pick up on that stuff more but I it didn't also really think adds to the story so, and that all of the characters that are in the show right now are characters that seem to have control over their own well-being so it makes sense that you would be able to talk to more characters because more characters are in control. You know. Yeah. That's why um, we have the, the, the vignettes of Billy and Tommy talking to the camera. Yeah. Um, the boy, one of the boys has the same super speed that one brother has, which I think is very fitting. Seemed like, it, you know, it's a thing that could, you know, it seems pretty normal to, that would happen um because yeah i feel like that kind of stuff just especially because they're twins and she was a twin and all yeah. of that um they were showing that like near the edge of town the people weren't really moving on this monitor and we also saw the vision saw that the people were standing still not moving at all really they yeah. were frozen there I don't know if that's just because the camera of the show or they weren't using that street so they didn't need them to move. I don't really understand why they were just frozen there. It could because also you think- be the further away you get from Wanda, the less control she has. But then they would be moving around doing whatever they wanted to do, right? No, but like she, the way it works is that she has to tell you what to do. Like you're all in this, um, oh. You're all in this world. You're all in this, like she's brainwashing you, but she has to tell you what to do in order for you to do it. Yeah, but also she's very powerful, so I don't think it matters how far. And it's away like it's like they said about the kids, um, the kids, uh, like Pietro was talking about, like 
yeah, where did these kids come from? Um, yeah, it's one of my notes. You did a really good job of not putting them through this trauma and just keeping them asleep for so long before this episode. So it could be something like that. But so she just purposely didn't make them do much, so they wouldn't have to feel the scariness, I guess. Possibly. Well, that's that's for the kids. I don't know if that would be the same for the um, adults out that are actually Cause, still outside. Because it's clearly scary. Because when they turn, yeah. with, like like with and Agnes, that lady was crying. Like you saw the tear come up. Like the she was putting up the ghost and like just going back yeah. and forth. Like she had a tear on her face. It was so like gold colored. They're they're feeling it. So. But so I think it'd be better if they're sleeping because they won't feel anything. Exactly. So. Which is why. I'm yeah, because. Really because like when he so like later in the episode, um, which is pretty close to where we are right now, anyways, um, he um, vision does the same thing to Agnes that he did in the last episode, where he kind of like helps her like, and it's like it's so weird how as soon as he does it, it's almost like they instantly know what hap- what's been going on this whole time. Like they're very conscious, yeah, of what, what even though they're being mind controlled, they're still very conscious of it. Yeah, which is like they're they're feeling all of these feelings they know what's going on they just have no control over what they're able to do so that makes it even more depressing they're like, feeling like all of her grief and just pain yeah. and all of this and she's trying to hide pain. down with this now happy they're missing face. their lives yeah and they're also because yeah they're probably also sad because they're missing their lives you know they're hostage i mean who wants to be hostage no one does so yeah it's really interesting and then she's like laughing like hysterically like someone who's just going through the worst stuff ever and she's basically saying that there's i think she was basically saying that there's no way to fix it i don't know she see it it, even though we thought she was like we we, i was kind of thinking that she has some villainous something going on with her and she still could like this still could could. and if she's really in charge of everything here then she could have just faked that and just because, put him at ease. Yeah, because out of everyone, she has the most time on the show, I feel like, out yeah, of all the extras. Definitely. She also says the most lines. Like, she has, like, the most TV show lines. Like, some of the people say regular things, and she always has this, like, fake voice and fake... Like, she, you can when tell she wrote character. That one time. But Which that was Herb a... also did in this episode. I just wanted to point out. What did he say? Well, w- when she came up to him, uh, she was like, "Why? Well, well, hopefully, Vision can help you." And he was like, "Oh, Vision's not on duty." Uh, then he looked at her and he's like, "Do you want? Do you want something changed? Do you want him to be on duty? Like, do you want to change no. something?" And she's like, "Oh no, that's fine." So. Oh, I thought he was saying, "Can I help you?" Yeah, but it, it, in the way of. Do you want the show to be different? Do you want this to be different? I think is what was happening. Yeah. Still the whole fact that it's on a show is kind of confusing. She didn't, that's kind of unnecessary. But it is a good excuse as to why I'm not really, I'm I'm not really sure why it's on a TV screen. And that everyone knows that and that everyone's working towards her life this way makes sense to me. Yeah, but like the the way that it's like everyone knows that and like everyone's common goal is making the TV show run smoothly, except for a vision. And it's not that the TV show is running smoothly; it's that Wanda's life is running smoothly. I know, but the fact that they break here and like do me to take that line again, like they know that they're on a show. Yeah, and I, they want it to go well, but they also want it to be. It's also a life that they want to go well, but I mean, they're doing it for the show. I guess. Well, she's you know? they're trying not to upset her because. They, yeah. they know the power that she has, obviously. Yeah. So, uh, any more notes from this episode? Um, I mean, there's loads more just because I didn't want to forget anything important. Um, but we can just talk about the fact that okay. So the blood work, they were able when they were hacking into the system, and looking at the blood work stuff, and they were showing that like it's not like her body's being changed. Um, so I'm wondering if. I don't think Wanda would intentionally do that. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's affecting Wanda probably at all. Probably not. Because she's made out of random stuff anyways. Um, she's already made out of like... Well, she's a human, but she has like powers from the so, Mind Stone and things. 
her her body already is messed up in a way so yeah. i mean even though it's a good thing for her like so but the people there the longer they're there i'm assuming the worse it gets yeah i, I i'm but it's... i also feel like they're implying that when you leave and come back in and that kind of stuff it makes it worse so, like, the more times you go in and out, the worse it's going to be. I think it accelerates it quicker. I think if you're just there, it's kind of okay. But if you leave it in and out, which is what they were planning on doing. So that's something we need to take note of because that could lead to someone getting either seriously ill. And also or- people were talking about the commercial in a different way than I had originally interpreted it. More like uh, the magic is keeping you alive or something like that. Yeah, people yeah, were, explain that to me, because you were talking clear, about that, and I was confused. People didn't have a clear, like, this is a specific thing that we have already seen. So it's either something that has happened that we just don't know about, or it's something that either nobody caught on to, or it's happening now. So that that would lead into people are dying, for lack of a better word, in this town. It could be that, yeah. Or maybe we can't bring people back from the dead. Something, the magic can't do that or something like that. I don't know. But. Yeah. Um, let's see if there's anything else really important. Um, uh, the boys have powers. So that's. Yeah, I mentioned that the one and yeah. the other one has the cool um, hearing thing. I can't tell if it's he can, he's inside someone else's head or if he can hear what they're hearing around him or if he can just hear things great distances. Yeah, I don't know. You're, it's one of those three, I think. But this 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 does make sense because in the comics they they have um powers. So their um, names and their names their superhero names are wicked and speed. I don't really know what the wicked powers are, but speed we definitely know what that is. So yeah, this yeah. makes sense with the the stuff. Um I think one of the most important parts of the whole thing was when Vision was trying to go through the barrier. Mm-hmm. He clearly, he was making it sound like if someone grabbed on him and pulled him, he'd be fine. He'd make it through fine. Well, but you were I, saying- I, I assume he doesn't, like, he was- But you were saying that he was, he's not alive. And when he tries to come through, he's, he, he would die either way. Yeah. That's what I assume. I was assuming that the thing was really trying to keep him in because she clearly didn't want anyone to leave. And he's the only one who might be strong enough to leave. And she probably also made it so that the bearer would be able to detect if he was trying to go through. She's not stupid. She knows that something like this will probably happen. Um, well, it's kind of taking her by surprise because she's surprised that he's that's true. Like rebelling against her. So maybe she didn't see this as a possibility. Yeah. But- and I think one thing that's really needs to be noted is the fact that when he was talking to Agnes, he didn't know what the Avengers were. He And also that kind of goes back to what he said before. Like, he doesn't really know why he's here. Like, they don't... He, he doesn't, doesn't remember know his how, life before Westview. Yeah. He knows that they've been together, but he doesn't know when their anniversary was. And that goes back to the very first episode. Yeah. He's like, oh, I don't... And then she never really says, oh, yeah, this is our anniversary. He, she's just like, yeah, there really is. And yeah. And she just kind of tries to bring it back, you know. And I think those little things throughout the whole thing, they weren't, they didn't really make sense until we were like, until they really were like, oh, he doesn't know who the Avengers are. Okay, then this is, this is worse than we could have imagined it could have been. Um, and then the even worse thing is that she increases the boundaries because the sun hears and then bam, a lot of people Darcy's are now the, added. Darcy's in the hex now, along with most of the shield agents um so we'll see and we'll have to see if that other people i don't think those other people will get sucked in but it's weird because you think she purposely makes sure that something so that they they would get in if she really wanted them to she clearly wants that bad guy if he is a bad guy to stay out and she clearly wants the good guys who are even farther ahead of them to not be in there or else she'd do something unless at the beginning of next episode we see them get sucked in that could be a possibility because she like she turned off the magic or whatever yeah but we can't we can't exactly see when she turned off what was happening on the other side um and then the last thing that you mentioned of the whole thing is that you think vision is actually dead um i do think so or at the very least he's 
not able to run functionally anymore. And he can't, he can't remember anything before. And I think, if I'm thinking correctly, probably not. The fact that she stole him, remember when she stole him? I think they there is a way to bring him back potentially. I think so because he isn't he isn't but a she, human like he. But is. she definitely can't do it alone, and the way she has done it is not foolproof because he doesn't remember his past life, and I think that's the key to the whole thing is getting him getting it so that you fix him completely, and then he'll be able to remember his past life. And the only way that she's gonna fix from this is if someone either helps her know how to grieve properly. And then realize, oh, he's actually dead. I need to move on. Or if he comes back, and then she's happy again. Yeah. Um, so, so, do you have any predictions for the next couple episodes as we wrap mm, up? Here? I don't really think so. I think it's just. Who do you think the guy that uh, Monica's calling is? Which the aerospace engineer? Who do you think that is? Who is calling who? Monica. Remember, she was. Um, she was calling. Uh, oh, like, the we're, friend. We gotta, go, we gotta go get my friend who's gonna help. Who do you think that is? I couldn't tell you. Yeah, I don't really know either. There's a lot of different options it could be, so we'll see what happens. But it will be good, whatever it is. I'm sure. Um, I'm wondering if some of the people who get su- who just got sucked in now is the control will be weaker just because they know what's going on already. And it's maybe somehow, like, they might be able to help her get over it and fix everything. If I'm wondering if somehow it's going to be the people on the inside that save the day. I think that would be almost cooler. Yeah. That seems like a better thing. Like, everyone in the town is finally, like, it would be cool. And, like, everyone finally, like, is able to, like, like, vision or whatever just fixes everyone. And so everyone's clearly thinking, and then they all go, and they, like, have, like, like and help her out. But... Well, let's see. Maybe now that he's sucked back in, he'll have forgotten what he just realized. Yeah, you know? I'm interested to see if that'll happen. I'm wondering if she's going to try to, because I feel like he was kind of, like, maybe he was under the control, and then he kind of loose, she loosened up on him somehow, and now he's going to be back again. I wonder, or maybe he never was in the first place, and now he will be. But I just don't think she has the ability to control him, because he's just yeah. so much cooler. Just like the boys, <laughs> just like Pietro, she has no control of him currently. Of power powered people so if someone with superpowers goes in i mean hey what would the powers i guess the powers would stay if they went in so um we'll see anyways we'll have to see that was a long episode um hall of fame of life really quickly let's pick a mascot who do you who are you going to be representing you well i feel like there's so limited options that I like, so maybe you should pick yours first. Um, I would pick the Cinnamon Squares because I think that that's cool, but I am going to go with uh, the Kool-Aid Man since I was such a high uh, speaking of the Kool-Aid Man today. Um, so yeah, that's my that's my pick. I, don't, I didn't spell that right at all. It's spelled with a K. I figured that much out, but man. It's fine. We can do it later. Um, yeah, we so can. Who, who's your choice? Um, is it going to be the Doughboy? We should do the Doughboy. Because <laughs> do I feel like if I pick Flo, then that's just definitely going to be your show. Yeah. So Kool Aid Man versus Pillsbury Doughboy. Uh, vote on it on our Instagram over the hill underscore with underscore underhill. Um, and you can vote on it for the first 24 hours of that post being up. Uh, you can vote in the YouTube comments if you've already missed that window, uh, and it will be counted. Um, so, any last words before we wrap it up, Zoe? Um, I don't think so. Thank you. All I guess could say thank you for watching and listening, and we appreciate all of your support and all of you guys who watch and listen and take the time out of your day to do that. We appreciate it a lot. So, uh, we'll be back next week, probably with something interesting we'll see what it is i haven't just figured it out yet but uh any anything that you want us to talk about let us know but until then this has been over the hill with underhill uh see you later